Well, hey, I got three quick words. Number one, I would never contact you and through WhatsApp or through text me or whatever silly stuff these ripoff artists are doing nowadays on YouTube and ask you to buy anything, ask you to pay for shipping, ask you to invest in anything. I would never do that. Right here is a video that is all over the YouTube channels. Stick around. There's tips and tricks and stuff that I talk about in between. That one just nugget of information could help you. And if you're new here, you just jumped on board, down in the description below to make it easier for everybody to find videos, I'll have a complete list of our almost finished sensor videos going through all the sensors on a 7.3. I also have some other bits of different videos that uh, are more popular than the other ones, so I don't waste your time, but they'll be right down in the description. And you can head over to my channel and go through our video library and see what else interests you also. But until then, let's get to changing out your rear main on your 7.3. Hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen. And as we work through our Cobra 7.3 Power Stroke project here, we're going to be talking about replacement of the rear main seal. A couple questions uh, that always come floating through, and this one kind of seems to be at the top of the bunch, is what oil do we use in our shop? And frankly, also in my all my personal vehicles. Uh, right there she is. I use Schaefer 1540. Why? Uh, I've been to the Schaefer plant, I've been to the Royal Purple plant, I've been to the Kandal plant, I've been to several of the oil plants and Schaefer's really just proved it for me with their one million mile semi teardowns that, uh, matter of fact, they are online on YouTube. But anyways, they've really proven that it's a good quality oil. Uh, Royal Purple, um, excellent oil. Wouldn't suggest using it in, in here. Uh, it gets too thin, too quick. Uh, even though they might have their viscosity level uh, saying that, ooh, you know, we're better than anybody else. It just thins out too much in a 7.3 that is, you know, it, it's reliant on oil and hydraulic for the injectors and, and so much going on in this motor. It just thins out too much. But that, you know, if you're using Royal Purple and that's your game, that, that's fine. I'm just saying that this is what people have asked a lot, so I'm answering. Uh, oil filter, Napa. 1734 XE extended range. Why do I use that? Uh, basically, it's pretty much the same thing as Wix, but the XE is the extended range and it gives you better micron recovery. Uh, less crap gets through the filter. Now, it's an expensive filter, it's a good quality filter, but in every fall and every spring, Napa, for everybody, has a filter sale. You can calculate how many filters you through, use through the years and for all your vehicles and go down there and you'll get a heck of a sale price. Uh, they just had their filter sale uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, these right here, um, I bought a case of these uh, for my own uh, vehicles. Uh, and when I mean a case, I mean I, my type of case where you got a pallet. 
But anyways, uh, normally these, depending on the Napa dealer, these can range anywhere from 48 to 63 bucks, depending on uh, your Napa dealer. But uh, through their sale, 24 bucks. I mean, you can't beat that for an extended range filter. So anyways, we're here to talk about this. <laughs> so let's get on that. A uh, couple videos back, I said I was going to show you how to do this without the expensive tools and equipment. I uh, also said the reason why we're doing it here is because you don't have a $50,000 lift. You don't have tens of thousands of dollars of tools and stuff like that. When I do these videos, I'm taking into account that you don't have all this fancy stuff. So let's get going. Uh, and, and also to, you know, if you get to the point where I'm at right here, where you dropped the drive shaft, removed the transmission, and removed all this stuff, you know, there's just plain fact and simple, I don't need to go over certain stuff. So this is where we are right here, and I've already removed these five bolts, which are number eights. And right here is always a real bugger to get these off because the RTV sealant like glue basically really keeps these on here really good. Now, another point that I want to make, and over the years I've, you know, gotten emails, gotten telephone calls that Oh, well, I <laughs> replaced my rear main seal, and a week later, it's dripping again. Well, if you're going to go in here and take all this time to remove everything or pull the motor out, which, you know, doesn't have to be done to do this, but you still have to remove the transmission, transfer case, whatever, if you got a four-wheel drive, drive shaft. This right here... This panel, this cover will leak. Over time, the gray RTV will give out and it will leak. My suggestion, if you've gone in this far, and we're not gonna cover that in this particular video because it's just, it's, you know, it, it's easy. Just uh, go ahead, cut along the oil pan with a uh, utility knife, remove your little bolts in here, remove the cover carefully, clean it all off, put some new RTV on there, and reinstall it, tighten it all down to the specs. Uh, these are uh, 15 foot-pounds, by the way. And you've just eliminated another problem. But on back to this right here, uh, I, it, these are in the painting departments. Uh, I really, I really like that for these jobs, uh, this particular job actually. Uh, do not go after this with a screwdriver. You don't want to bend this back plate. Um, it, it can be easily done because that RTV really holds it on. But just simply get up in here, work it on down, work it on down, work it on down. And then just come through and then keep on prying it till you work the uh, RTV loose. Okay, so hopefully, so hopefully I got two cameras. you'll be able to catch this, but see how that's designed? So in real slowly. See how slick that is? Get her down here. And off she comes. Just beautiful, excellent. So once again, I, I, I think it's a five in one or seven in one. Anyway, it's in, the, it's in the painting department. These work really good for this. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna clean this all up without putting all the gook inside the motor. So get yourself some paper toweling. If it bothers you, get some lint-free paper toweling. And let's just get it stuffed inside here. So we don't end up with a whole bunch of goo and uh, debris 
and other items sitting inside the pan. Get it pushed in there real nicely. That'll prevent anything from getting in there. Won't end up in your injectors. And then get her cleaned up. Remove the big stuff just with a little blade like this. This comes off real easy actually. And then down here where you can see, you know, she's going to be she's going to be trouble. There's nothing wrong with uh, coming after this as soon as I find it. There we go. Uh, fine wire or medium wire? You can see that makes just quick work out of this. There, there's no farting around, just bing, bam, boom, it's done. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this and I'm going to go around here, around the crank. If you are installing what I am installing, which is the retaining sleeve, the sleeve system, this is cool. If you're just going to be replacing just the seal and you're not going to be putting the sleeve in there do not do this all right so just a quick run around here Next, I'm going to clean her all up real pretty. Bend over, baby. The government is here. Whatever you like to use for cleaning, go right ahead. Most people uh, like to use the brake clean. Uh, any brake clean is just fine, but what you do really want to do is, and I'll tell you a quick story after this, but wear gloves and, and let's not go to town. Uh, if you're going to do this inside of a closed area and you're just going to be spraying it all over the place, uh, make sure that you have your windows and doors open. If you're going to do it the way that I'm doing, you know, just with some paper toweling uh, or a rag and the brake clean and this right here, you know, at least wear this. So the story is, is that, and I'm sure everybody here knows of a person like this. 
Um, I have a, a brother-in-law who he gets the best deals on everything. He knows everything in the world. He is just God to anything. Well, the genius who knows everything was cleaning up a semi-drum, and uh, this is at his shop, used 14 cans all at the same time cleaning up this drum. Well, three hours later, they had him in the back of the ambulance, and this was nine years ago. At this point in time, he still can't speak, barely can walk. So when you're using chemicals and brake clean, please be careful. You know, granted 14 cans was absolutely ridiculously stupid, but it's dangerous. Whether you get one little sniff or you got a whole shop full of 14 cans of vapor, it's just not a good idea. So that's my story, so please be careful. So I'll get this nice and cleaned up right here. Really doesn't make a difference if you scratch it up, but I'd, like I said, I do prefer if you would use the fine brush or the medium brush. The uh, heavy brush is just, uh, she, she's really gonna gouge. So for today's purpose, Oh, we got a little bit down there. Look at that. There we go. That's the stuff you got to watch out for. All right, so she's nice and clean there. And I'm gonna dig my paper toweling back out, or if you're using lint-free, if that's what makes you happy, go right ahead. There we go. And So now, if you're just installing the regular seal without the sleeve, uh, I like to use 400 wet sand. We want to make this nice and smooth through here, but we don't also want to be removing any excessive amount of metal off of here even though that this is a high grade steel but anyway as you can see just go through and do a light sanding to get all the residue off any little nips any little chips any little gouges whatever the case may be we don't have to sit here and reshape the steel, once again, just a real light sanding. And get her cleaned off real nice. All right, so I'm happy with that. And we still got a ton of brake clean left. Better than sitting there and spraying her down. So anyways, I promised you and I am delivering. 
if you don't have the fancy tools and you don't want to go out and buy the 130 or and I think they're all the way up to $190 installer this is hickory a nice heavy solid piece of wood and what I did was and what you can do is you've got that dull pin right there and this is part of that assembly for the flywheel <coughs> So you could do it this way, drill your hole right there so it fits over the dowel, and then this right here was a two and a quarter inch hole. I just kind of you know, lined it up after I had this cut, just kind of guessed a little bit. You're only going to use it once. so. And then of course you got the oil pan down here so you have to nip the edges. I'm confident in you, you'll get her done. So the next thing that we want to do is pull out our sleeve retainer. Our gray RTV. <coughs> and also two Let's go through and blow these out. That way if any debris got in there, we don't have to worry about torquing it down and having our torque off. But this unit right here comes with an inner sleeve. And that sleeve slides over this because if you have an engine that has a high amount of miles on it, the regular international seal would have worked its way in. You install a new one, <coughs> could leak. So if you're worried about that, get the one with the sleeve. And we're gonna use sleeve retainer, or at least that's what I use. We get these in uh, two different companies. So we got Permatex 64000, or if you like Loctite, Loctite 620. If you're going to go to this time and you're going to go through this expense, get a new bottle. Fresh is always better. So you have to put the sleeve retainer on here. or some type of retainer on there. Get it on, smooth it on out. You might have seen some videos where they just poured it you know, in there and then they just kind of hacked it on. Um, this is gonna actually work as a lubricant to help slide it on easier. So just like what you would do with oil, Get her nice and lubed up, except you're doing it with sleeve retainer. Now you got two alignment pins. Make sure that you get your alignment pins in mind and lined up. Gray RTV. If you want to know what I'm using here. This is going to be the Ford Motorcraft RTV silicone. Almost as good as the international brand. Well, where did my knife go? There it is. Now there's a reason on here 
why they have that indentation. That's where you put the sealer. We don't have to go nuts here. Just a nice quarter inch bead. That'll be more than adequate. Do not fill in the holes for the screws. We'll get to that. So we got that handled. Once again, don't forget your alignment pins. Get in there as close as you can. Take your homemade chunk of oak, hickory, any type of hardwood, little tap, little tap. All right. Got to press around here and make sure that it's not sitting proud, meaning that the sleeve is sitting outward because when you start putting this back together, then everything else will be out of whack. All right, on to the next deal here. Alignment pin, alignment pin. Get them alignment pins lined up push it on by hand once again make sure that the sleeve is not proud sitting out if you do get into that situation where you were 99 percent there just uh, take the wood and just put a little angle put it up on the edge right here and just tap and a tap, not directly with the hammer, with the piece of oak or hickory or whatever you were using. Anyways, get these lined up right here. Beforehand, clean your, clean your bolts up. Also too, when you start working on a large project like this, whether you're experienced or not, it's always good to have cans Label them with a marker, Ziploc bags, label them with a marker, what were they for? You never know if you get interrupted in between doing a big job or if this is something that you're working on on the weekends and later on it's first going to be driven. Know your fasteners. Put them in a bag, put them in a can, mark what they are and how many were there. So. Get those bolts cleaned up and hopefully we can uh, get a picture of that. The reason why when you put your gray RTV on here that you follow this center piece and then go around is you don't want to be screwing in and having RTV go into the hole like this right here these big old chunks of RTV. You screw it on in there and then your torque value will not be right. Right here, you know, it's not the end of the world, but if it was off enough where it rode, the seal rode sideways, they're not designed to do that and then you'll end up three years on down the line having to pull all this apart again and having to do it again for something just as minor as that. So, I gotta clean this one up yet.
It is real nice. We don't need to pre-lube these, so do not pre-lube them. Get them in here. Total of five of them once again. The uh, gray RTV that we're using, this particular Ford brand, what we're going to do is just simply run them snug. Don't get crazy here. Just a little bit until it pushes out. Just a little bit. We're not doing the full tightening once again, just a little bit. There we go. All right. Leave that sit for one hour. Let it make its gasket and while we're waiting for this right here let's talk about whether you've seen it or not for the manual transmission guys all right the automatic transmission guys we don't need to worry about this manual transmission guys here's something that you may want to consider and uh, you'll actually use the same sleeve retainer but anyways, we've, uh, we've got a half inch 90, half inch copper pipe here. This is uh, four and a half inches. Then you can actually, you can use a couple different versions of this next one right here. Once again, half inch, but uh, you can use a, a 33, 22, or 45, depending on how you want to route it in here. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to go like that. So this bottom run right here is uh, using this fitting right here. This is a uh, four and an eighth. This pipe is four and a half. But anyways, you can get her in there. And I'm just going to leave it loose here just so you get the gist of it. Because this is an automatic, I'm not going to leave this in here. But anyways, put some, uh, before you put this in up on top here, put some gray RTV, some good sealant, good adhesive type of RTV. Basically use the same right here. Run that down, you can see this, and then this goes down through the hole right here. Why? All right. So if you do get a top end engine leak uh, and it starts filling up the valley with uh, oil or fuel for the manual transmission guys, this right here will take it and move it down and get it out of here instead of the flywheel spinning and the clutch spinning and everything like that and throwing it onto the clutch. Not only will you have to fix whatever problem is in on the valley, You'll have to t pull out the transmission, replace the clutch usually, and that's always fun, you know, because of an oil leak. So that is how that mod would look. And once again, this is an automatic, so we're not gonna keep this in here. If you uh, solder it all together, great. If you just wanna use the retaining and put it together like that with the with whatever retaining that you used on here 
great. Once you get everything together, the way this sits in here, it, it, it as long as these don't come apart, this is not going to interfere any time in the future with coming loose and then you know screwing up your transmission. So that is a little tip right there for you. If you want to do that mod, I mean you're in here already. So let's say the uh, hour is gone by. Um, actually, this was sitting here for a while because I had to change out the camera, by the way. But anyways, uh, these bolts right here are going to be 15 foot-pounds. If uh, you want to equate that into inch-pounds, it's 180 inch-pounds. And this is just a one-clicker. Don't be going back and doing a double-click on it. Just get your one-click and you're good. Click. Click. Click, click, click. Yeah, we don't uh, need to go into, you know, any real in-depth, you know, do this one, this one, this one, this one, do a star pattern, whatever. You know, tighten it down, 15 foot-pounds, you're good. Next on the list, we'll uh, put this back together here. And... This is an automatic transmission, so this is a spacer. Get that on there, make sure that she's happy. Automatic transmission again. Take her on out, clean her up, make her look all nice and shiny. That put back on there. Got your retainers right here. I knew where they were because I had them in my bag. I knew what they were because I had them marked. And go ahead, push these on here. The barbs are going to be facing you. You can go ahead and take a socket if you want and just kind of tap them in here, but most of the time you'll just be good taking your finger, fingernails, pushing them on there. Next we got the flywheel. Now when you're taking stuff apart on your vehicle, don't assume that you're like my brother-in-law and you know everything. You never know if you're going to get interrupted like I said. Get these all laid out here. You can tell I got an OCD, huh? So anyways, don't assume that you know everything. Mark it. As you're taking it off, go ahead and mark it. Don't make the assumption that when you start pulling all this apart you could forget one simple thing and there you sit having to pull a transmission out or transfer case out or whatever the case may be because you missed something so either way this is a no-brainer you got an alignment pin that goes on there and then you've got this unit right here that goes on there. So get everything on, get everything lined up, and let's not get crazy here, but just as a tip, just a, 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 a dab will do you, just a little drop. vibration of the diesel, the removing of these. That's usually when you buy a new clutch, you, you always get new ones of these. There's a reason they lose their stretch. But you know, this is cool, nothing wrong with this. 
Put a little sleeve retainer on it. Get them in there. Turn them in by hand. You want to make sure that you're sitting in the threads. These are uh, fine thread bolts. And if you go after them with an impact and you run them in sideways, you've got some problems. They're not as forgiving as the standard thread. Now we can go after it with an impact. Lowest setting, we're not running her home, just get them snugged up. So we don't want to get crazy with these. Oddly enough, if you take a look at that rear of that crank and where these bolts go into it, if you take one of these, put her on max and just run her home because I don't know what I'm talking about and the other guy doesn't know what he's talking about, you actually can cause the back of that crank to push itself out a little bit and then as it's turning it's going to be turning on your brand new seal and doing this across it. As soon as it starts to wear again then you'll end up having oil coming out of your brand new seal. So snug them up, come back in with your torque. She's a one clicker and these are number 18 on this one. Click. 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 Nope, that was going to be a bit of a bugger. There, there we go, click. There we go, we got click. It says he clicks, it moves. Now if you find yourself that you're in a situation where you're not able to get the click out of it, I was able to get the click out of it and then a little bit of movement, but you can always come in here and uh, just put a rod through here to catch something on the edge, you know, where the starter is. You should have the starter out anyway, so that's a good place to do it. And use the starter area with a rod through it and that'll catch that. That's one of the ways of doing it. Um, you can also put a C-clamp over here so it hits the top of the aluminum housing and that right there will be strong enough to latch it into place. But basically this is how you can do your rear main seal and I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day. You're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell. You know the little bell. Doesn't cost you anything. And you'll be notified every time I put out a brand new video. This is a variety channel, so choose the stuff that you want to view and the stuff that you don't. Well, don't watch it. 
Until then, go home. Take it easy. Have a good weekend. Get out of here.